Good morning, folks. Three days to observing the frontier. Tickets are available at the door for those who have sent emails asking about it. Let's get right to it. Overnight, a beautiful plasma filament exploded away from our star. It was incoming over the northeastern limb. And we already know from yesterday that just south of that, we have reasons to be watching as well. And that continues today. Let's pop over to spaceweathernews.com and find the uptick in solar flaring continues. We had a C9.5 flare, nearly M-class, and it occurred at the limb where those large sunspots can be found. Minor ejecta ensued. Both that and the filament up north are going to miss Earth. Further flaring and CMEs may not miss Earth, however, as those spots are turning in to face us, still small and magnetically spread out ahead in the lead, but those big boys at the limb do appear to have complex core structure, if not magnetic complexity as well. During the high-speed solar wind stream last night, we saw a twist in the blue, the phi angle. It wiped away near-Earth electrons by a factor of 100,000 and immediately triggered another magnetic storm. Part of the corona hole is still facing Earth up there, so this high-speed stream isn't going anywhere for a while. But it has been having low earthquake power for days, and the tropical and geomagnetic storms have precluded quaking even further. Left side equator, we know the next one is coming in, and it has been stronger than the current opening. Looking at the power, what little was gained up north shoots to the southern polar opening, and the incoming corona hole force expands its influence. We're already seeing a minor uptick with one well above average in Colombia and another that was downgraded to 5.9 in Russia. A number of readings well above 6 to this one, and it's the largest rumble of the month of October thus far. Peeking in on the tropics, we have typhoon candidates heading at the northern Philippines and up towards Japan. Powerful earth spots there. Nora, south of Hawaii, will be shearing moisture up over the rest of the week as well. Let's move over to our top story, a major long-term update. We again confirm Jupiter is changing rapidly. Remember, we've seen evidence that the Sun, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus are all changing much faster than Earth is, and boy, that's not our pollution. It's the coming grand solar minimum. Red spot still shrinking, losing color, stripes still moving, and all indicative of increased storm activity, cyclones and anticyclones, climate chaos on Jupiter. Also got a link for you to a new study of an old comet, Electrical Discourse about the Comet Tail Solar Windsock. We also have another Skirmion story for you, that is two recent breakthroughs on these little understood magnetic vortices. And lastly, yesterday was the final day for Nestle, Coca-Cola, and other drug dealers to make comment on the FDA's new rule to add daily value percentages for added sugars on the nutrition label, something the lobbyists have staved off forever. This follows our many website talks on the topic, and I couldn't be happier. Given the fracking shills' willingness to come test the observers a few days ago, I'll invite the sugar shills to come get eaten alive on the comment section today. Just watch. Someone is going to try to comment on how having a percentage next to sugar, like is next to protein or fat or sodium, is somehow a violation of our freedoms and indicative of a nanny state. Do your credibility a favor and cry wolf only for real intrusive situations. It appears the top viewer locations wanted to start without me. That's all right. It's pressure, then radar ahead through tonight, followed by current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.